you look wonderful, I think. So how's life? I know, you got inflation, you got crime. We're on the brink of nuclear war. But thank God these bozos have their priorities straight. That the committee direct the chairman to issue a subpoena for relevant documents and testimony under oath from Donald John Trump. Those in favor will say aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, on this vote, there are nine ayes and zero noes. The resolution is agreed to. Mmm, nine eyes like a fly. <laughs> is that right? I don't think so. I don't think, no, I don't think so either. But there's a shocker. Just 25 days before the midterms, the Jan 6 panel votes unanimously to subpoena Trump. That's about as surprising as the final score at a Harlem Globetrotters game. <laughs> and it's about as spontaneous as Adam Schiff's face. <laughs> Does that make sense? No. And what a coincidence. It happens the same day the inflation number comes out, and it's higher than Hunter Biden on free crack day. <laughs> Crime is exploding like a can of Sprite left in a freezer too long. The borders are as open as the West Wing's windows when Joe forgets his lactate pills. <laughs> Kids are getting dumber, and I have to walk over a drugged-out zombie just to get to work. <laughs> So why not? Let's go after Trump, screams the Dems. This guy's been in more fake trials than the cast of Law and Order. <laughs> but the hope is the news cycle will shift from Biden's disasters to the orange monster who can make Adam Kinzinger cry like he's cutting onions while his nuts are in a vice. <laughs> Terrible. So will this distraction overwhelm the public enough that they'll forget it costs 100 bucks to fill up a tank of gas or 15 bucks for a pack of hot dogs? You heard right. Joy Behar's lunch costs 15 bucks. <laughs> 15 bucks, it's true, for a pack of hot dogs. Did someone blow up the Oscar Mayer pipeline, too? <laughs> Can't the president tap into our tube steak reserves? Look, surveys tell us everyone, what everyone cares about, it ain't Jan 6. It's the economy, it's crime. January 6 is less important than Todd Pyro's time slot. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's watching. <laughs> Probably your family. Here's why. January 6th is not eating away at your retirement fund. It's not mugging people on the subways. It's not killing people by the tens of thousands like fentanyl. And it's certainly not elevating possibility for nuclear war as we pour billions into a conflict thousands of miles away. And I don't mean cat's honeymoon. <laughs> Each one of those things is an urgent matter. People are dying on the streets, in their beds, and soon maybe everywhere else. They have us so close to a nuclear disaster you can practically taste the plutonium, which reminds me of Dana's queso. <laughs> now, that was worse. <laughs> but January 6th, that's the concern. It's there, Hail Mary. No wonder so many are leaving the party, like the keg is empty and the cops just showed up, including this smart woman. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. It's now under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms enshrined in our Constitution, and who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality who demonize the police, who protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans. You know, that lady, I think she makes a lot of sense. I should have her on. <laughs> <laughs> but don't fret, Democrats. You lost to Tulsi, but you gained to Liz Cheney. <laughs> yeah. But I'm starting to think the Dems screwed up with this insurrection theater. I predict it's going to backfire like Eric Swalwell after an extra large bean burrito. <laughs> it's not going to jail Trump. It's going to get him reelected. There's going to be a red dawn starting with an orange dawn. <laughs> and here's why. Anytime you watch the hearing, you see that the committee was more stacked than Dolly Parton playing Jenga. <laughs> and it's bursting. It's bursting with contempt for Trump and his supporters, a witch hunt armed with preordained conclusions and empowered with unlimited time and effort, all on the taxpayer's dime which is now worth only three cents since Biden took office. <laughs> They're having a trial where the prosecution and judges are on the same side and opposed by no one. With that setup, I could convict Tom Hanks of murder. And I just might. 
And it just validates Trump supporters' suspicions that the fix is in and the fix was always in. So the Dems are right. The hearings are going to anger some Americans, but not in the way they think. People don't swallow BS, unless, even when you hide it in kill meat sandwich. <laughs> Fact is, this country has big problems. <laughs> Economy, crime, the border, Harry and Meghan. <laughs> what are we going to do with them? But the Dems work to distract rather than attack the problems. Imagine if they spent all their energy on these issues instead of political theatrics. It's like they're all frustrated movie directors. Rather than solve the problems head on, they find weirder things to do, like convincing children they'd be happier sterile. Rather than tackle the border, they want to audit Ron DeSantis. Yeah, that's just what America asked for. Never mind our sovereignty is being invaded. Let's find out if he was really talking politics when he wrote off that dinner at the Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> They'll weaponize anything against their enemies. It's just like how Taylor Swift weaponized her music after I dumped her. <laughs> I moved on, Taylor. It's about time. So I hope the Dems get shellacked and maybe learn a lesson, because they never address a problem until they can see the political consequences approaching. But by then, so much damage has been done, the problems are not only worse, but perhaps unsalvageable, much like CNN. I mean, imagine if the Dems tried to tackle the problems. They could prevent a lot of suffering. Instead, they don't. So now we have a war. We have inflation. We have violence. It ends there if we're lucky. We got a White House that not only created 99% of it, but can't do squat about any of it, except to tell you not to believe your lying eyes and radioactive skin. Yes, she gave Democrats a piece of her mind, and it's the most brains they've had in years. Former presidential candidate and host of the Tulsi Gabbard Show podcast, Tulsi Gabbard. If he's the first thing you see upon waking, you're either watching Fox or he broke into your house. Co-host and Fox and Friends first, Todd Pyro. <laughs> She's like a Reese's Pieces. Tiny, shiny, and smells like peanut butter. <laughs> Fox News <laughs> contributor, catch him. <laughs> and he defeats people with his skull by outthinking them and also headbutts. My massive psychic and NWA no world television champion, Iris. <laughs> Tulsi, so uh, I would say first congratulations on leaving the Democratic Party. I would say welcome <laughs> aboard. But I don't know where you're going. I don't know where, where are you going? Are you going to re maintain the independence? Are you going to join a party? Yeah, are you going to become I'm a Scientologist? I am an independent. <laughs> no. No is the answer to that last question. Um, I, I've always been an independent minded person, even as I've been a Democrat for over 20 years. I've always been an independent Democrat. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, ultimately, this Democratic Party has gone insane. You said some incredibly brave things. I don't think anybody said the stuff about the anti white racism. Yeah. Because people are scared of saying that exactly. because they're Which afraid the then problem. they'll be called racist. Exactly. So you just have to just nod along and go, yeah, I guess we're the, <laughs> we'll just take being <laughs> hated. But uh, what do you make of this whole January 6th committee stuff happening now? Do you think it was just a coincidence that it's now? No, of course not. Yeah. Uh, from the very beginning, this has been political theater. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you have a commission that's supposed to be bipartisan, supposed to be unbiased and objective, but from the, from the get-go, from day one, it was an announcement of guilty before they even began. And so, I mean, it's no surprise to me that the American people are not paying attention. Yeah. Uh, that this is not what's on their minds. There are obviously many other things that uh, people are struggling with and dealing with all across the country. This is, this is not one of them. Yeah, you know, Todd, she makes a great point. More people are watching your show. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's the attacks right. on the 4 to 6 a.m. time slot, <laughs> Gunfeld. Uh, but I, I actually think you may be factually correct. <laughs> well, you're a lawyer. I am. You're a lawyer, so I got two questions for you. One, why? <laughs> um, <no. laughs> what will the subpoena do anything? Like he doesn't really have to show up, and if the uh, if the Congress takes back the uh, Republicans take the Congress, then it's never going to happen. And if he gets subpoenaed, should he testify? Well, to your first point, that's what this is all about. In regular law, like I practice in Santa Monica Superior Court. 
a two-month time window, which is basically all the Democrats have at this point, is nothing. I could get a subpoena dragged out way longer than two months mm. and, you know, drag it along, make the person testify maybe in three, four, five months. This is the president of the United States. This is an unprecedented ask. You don't think this is going to get dragged on beyond two months? The Democrats know it's going to get dragged yeah. on beyond two months, and that's why they waited till the last minute. They know they're not going to get this. This is their last ditch effort. It has nothing to do with January 6th. It has everything to do with November 8th. Mm -hmm. They're trying to score some points for the midterms, and it is going to fail big time. Mm. <laughs> Does it bother you that they're using our tax dollars to try and sway an election? It's surprising, isn't it? I mean, tax dollars bother me in general. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of tax dollars, I'm against. So, yes. 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 And I have the... I agree with Todd. I don't understand why they wait until now. Because unless Trump decides that he just wants to do it because yeah. he thinks it would be fun... Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of the reasons. Which is a possibility. <laughs> yes, sir. He's not a guy where he's like, an audience? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which I get, I'm a guy like that, too. <laughs> so I can understand. But if he doesn't want to, there's no way he has to, because it's going to flip to Republican control. You can drag it out far longer than that, as Todd said. And if they really wanted to, they could have had him be one of the first people they asked, but they didn't. But Liz Cheney's obviously gone all in with this. This mm -hmm. is her thing. So she had to make sure she had this invitation. Yeah. Well, uh, do you think he should do it? No. No? No, I don't. For one reason. Why should they get all the ratings? Why should they be relevant? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'll do it on yeah, Truth Social. That's yeah. what <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that's what, how we should do it, because that's what is a thousand percent about. CNN needs this. MSNBC needs this. Because they're going to cover it wall to wall, and it'll mm -hmm. be 24 hours of Trump again. Mm -hmm. And then people will watch, one, the ones that uh, feed off it, and the other ones will watch because they want to defend it. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is really about. It, three other presidents in our history have been subpoenaed, and all three didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So what, what are they actually going to do to him if he does? What, Cheney's going to put him on secret double probation? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they've literally tried everything they can to get him put behind bars, to get to the point where he couldn't run. So now they're going to have him come out. And even if he did, what, what would it have been? They all would have made their little speeches, and every time he spoke, oh, you're out of time, you're out of order. Like, it, it's a waste of his time. It, it, he never listens, but, uh, Mr. President, do not punch down and do yeah. not bring them up. You know, though, I have to say this. Imagine, Tyrus, how great this show would be every night if he was testifying every day. <laughs> yeah, but we wouldn't even have to work. We would just come in here and just roll tape. But this is the problem. And, and, and it's not just... President Trump, whenever someone or a group decides to make accusations against you with no foundation or no basis for anything other than just to ruin you or besmirch your name, the worst thing to do is engage them. The only people that you have to be clear with when you're made a, a damaging accusation or, some, or uh, alleged crime has been thrown against you by people who don't have anything to do with law enforcement is to engage. The only people you have to be good with is your family your friends, and your job. You don't owe them an explanation. He didn't, and if he didn't do anything wrong, which we, the FBI has said he hasn't, he has nothing to discuss with them. So there's no point. Mm -hmm. Don't feed the fire. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like I said to my masseuse, we'll have to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, <laughs> biological men get the shaft when it comes to the draft. If you'll be in the New York area and would like free tickets to see Gutfeld, go to foxnews.com slash Gutfeld and click on the link to join our studio audience. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.